Beautiful. Thank you, Kevin Pauls and friends. Well, we're joined today. We're excited, actually kind of excited about this segment. <laughs> we're joined today by resident physician, Dr. Dan Riley. And today, Dr. Dan, we're talking about some health topics that we've mm -hmm. seen in the news, right. um, particularly now, first of all, the superbugs. So right. there's a story of the 70 year old woman from mm -hmm. Nevada. She died of a superbug late mm -hmm. last year. She'd been in India um, and she had broken her femur. Mm -hmm. um, had, so she had spent some time at the, uh, in a hospital and contracted this superbug, which yeah. was resistant to any antibiotic the doctors had given, mm -hmm. given her. That's correct. Should we be concerned about this? Is this spreading? Mm -hmm. So the Canadian Health Agency, which is a body in Canada, tracks bacteria that don't respond to the usual treatments we use. Okay. And they keep fairly good numbers. And the chance that I'm going to encounter this is roughly one in 100,000. So I'm going to have to see 100,000 patients before I see one patient with this uh, situation. Mm. So the chance that you are going to be that one in 100,000 is pretty small. And also over the last four years in Canada, that chance really hasn't changed. They've been watching it since about 2010. In the first couple of years, there was an increase. But in the last four years, things have been pretty steady, which I think speaks to how well the Canadian healthcare system is containing this problem, mm. is watching it, is keeping those patients uh, separate from other patients and making sure that this doesn't spread uh, in our system. Mm. The way it certainly is spreading in the developing world where there's not the same controls uh, that we have here. Now, Cheryl, you've been to India, and as I was reading this, I was thinking, they were saying how, you know, some uh, hospitals in India are almost like, almost like petri dishes for some of these superbugs. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, I, I mean, obviously... They're handing out antibiotics so freely, right, right to and, everyone. And it's mm -hmm. not always in the cleanest condition. So mm -hmm. what do you say to someone like Cheryl, who's always jet-setting across the world? Been around the world, when, <laughs> right. How do we protect ourselves as we travel? So, certainly be healthy. So when you're traveling, make sure you're healthy, uh, which is all the things your mother told you about eating well and exercise and good diet well, you and know all that good stuff. When you're on a flight that's 36 hours long and people mm -hmm. are coughing all around you, it's not the easiest thing. It's not thing the to easiest do. thing. Uh, but if you're healthy, then you do better. Mm. Uh, and certainly, if you find yourself in one of those settings, wash your hands frequently, uh, make sure that you're keeping yourself healthy through that. And then really rare things, you kind of leave in God's hands mm. because you don't have that much control. Around. I don't go anywhere around the world without antibacterial lotion. Many of those little <laughs> things everywhere I go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the hos a hospital is supposed to be a safe place, right? And so this mm -hmm. lady went in because she'd broken her femur. Where else would she have gone? So do Indeed. we avoid hospitals in international when we go internationally or travel internationally? Well, I think you have to be careful about which hospital you end up in if you need to be there. Okay. I mean, if you're overseas and you're sick, you need a doctor. Yeah. But there is certainly a great variation in the quality of the places that one has access to. And so if you've got a choice, make sure you're uh, in the bigger centers, in the bigger cities, in the bigger hospitals. And you, you get a sense when you walk into places, uh, does this look like a Canadian or American <laughs> hospital? Are they doing all the things that I'm used to seeing happen? Or it doesn't look like it at all okay. and you I know, may need to take to some that, though. I, I distinctly remember being in a clinic in a very remote place in Africa. I'd had food poisoning for over a week mm. and I was actually hallucinating. It was really bad. <laughs> and uh, the people that we work with who are Ugandans and they mm. said, oh, we have to take you to the clinic. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to the clinic and it was so dirty mm -hmm. so dirty like the walls the floor the and at that moment were you thinking i need to go to a clean hospital or you were thinking i just need a doctor no there was no clean hospital within i don't know a nine hour drive i was thinking am i going to get something worse mm -hmm. by coming right. here or not and i was trying to figure out what should i do and i did i didn't know because i didn't have anyone else except you know ugandans to tell me they don't know how susceptible i am to different you know things that they're used to in a sense mm -hmm. so i was pretty scared but you know what in the end i got treated in about um an hour and a half I saw the doctor got a blood test got the results, got the treatment, wow. got my prescription, and The Canadian helps. system can learn from you, guys. A little crazy. bit. I gotta say, it cost me 30 bucks. There so, are, I mean, the physicians know. who have trained in the developing world that have chosen to stay there have made real sacrifices to be there, and they yes. do some amazing work. They really do. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's not just superbugs. It's also viruses that mm -hmm. we're worried about. And we saw Ebola, you know, kill 11,000 people. Indeed. People were so scared of that. The Zika mm -hmm. virus has, helped, you know, hurt thousands of babies with brain mm -hmm. damage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as global travel, well, we see this happening, should we be concerned about this? So, so certainly viruses are another group of bad things that one comes across. <laughs> bad things. And uh, there's always a new one out there because when a virus hits a population, eventually we're all immune to it. 
uh, and a new one needs to come along, which is why you're always hearing about ones you've never heard about before. Yes, okay, so I heard mm -hmm. about uh, MERS, Lassa fever, and Nipah virus. They're, they're working on a vaccine for these three, mm -hmm. and I'm like, why do we keep having new them. viruses? Like, well, again, because once you generally once you've encountered a given virus, uh, you're immune to that given virus, and so new viruses need to come along um, because the, once a virus has been through an area, it's pretty much done. And vac we have antibiotics uh, for bacteria, and it's true some bacteria are starting to figure out how to avoid the, our treatments. We don't really have the same medicines for viruses, so our best defense with viruses is vaccines. And so every time a new virus comes along, the labs get busy trying to get a vaccine in place because that's our best defense. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're traveling, you need to check in with your nurse practitioner or your family doctor about what should I worry about in that place? Are there vaccines I should get before I go there? In terms of the Zika virus, we've got good guidance if you're uh, trying to get pregnant, how long you should wait after your exposure before you do that so that you can be safe when you travel to those places. And with the Zika virus, is this something we're still concerned about? Because I haven't really heard about it that much, much. in the news Well, lately. and again, it's, it's been pretty stable. Uh, okay. So certainly there are lots of cases, and there is good resources online through the Centers for Disease Control and Public Health Canada about what countries you need to worry about. And if you're going there, how long you need to wait when you come back before you try to get pregnant. Zika, if you get it uh, and you're not pregnant, you may, you may not even notice. Uh, it's, a very mild, it's a very mild illness, it's a flu-like illness, so all the things, you know, when you get a bad flu here during the winter, you feel awful, your joints ache, you get a fever, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can be very mild, or it takes you out for a day or two, and then life carries on. Mm. The main danger is that if you're pregnant, there's a small risk of that virus getting to the baby. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that virus gets to the baby, then it can cause harm there. I think, you know, it's funny, you mentioned the flu. I think the flu kills a lot more people mm -hmm. than actually a lot of these other diseases, diseases that we're so afraid of. And I think fear is the word. I think even what mm -hmm. Todd said, you know, like mm -hmm. this is so yeah. scary to yeah. talk about this. But mm -hmm. you have to have a reality check about how many people would be susceptible. Maybe exactly. we need to protect against the flu more than some of these things. Mm -hmm. Now you're a healthcare professional, so mm -hmm. you guys are on the front line. I mean, someone comes to you and they have Ebola and they don't know it and you don't mm -hmm. protect yourself. I mean, you could die. That's, you guys are the most vulnerable. So how do you fight that fear? Well, certainly in Canada, that's a really rare thing. It's a really rare thing in Canada or the States to have a patient that is a danger because our system is so well designed to identify these patients as they enter the building. So when you come into the hospital, the hand wash station is there. Somebody's going to ask you, have you been to Africa in the last few months? Have you been admitted to a hospital? You've got a cough. Here's a mask. Put the mask on. Our system is very good at protecting us. Those that choose to work in the developing world who come from here to there or those who train there and choose to stay there, that's part of the courage of medicine, is that there is a danger to living and working in that environment. And if they've been called to, called to work there, I think they, they deserve a great deal of credit for the courage that it takes to be there, mm -hmm. for sure. So my big takeaway is don't be, wor don't be worried. Don't be worried. We're okay. Be smart, be yeah. healthy. Wash your hands frequently. And do research, right? Mm. When you're traveling, you do your research like you would do with anything else. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know where you're going. Where are you going? What are the concerns there? Uh, and visit your family doctor or nurse practitioner to talk about how do I protect myself? Are there vaccines I need? What should I eat or not eat? Uh, what can I do to make sure I'm safe? Dr. Dan, it's always good. Good to talk to you guys too. Thank you.